Hello, everybody. You're listening to the Indiana State Police Roadshow, brought to you by the Indiana State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids, a subsidiary of the Indiana State Police Alliance. I'm with Tom Trial from the Indiana State Police Public Information, who puts us on YouTube each and every week. Thank you, Tom, for getting us out. And I want to uh, welcome my guests. we got some first-time guests here to the Roadshow on something that the Indiana State Police have taken off with a new initiative. I've got Rachel Sitars. Hi. Good morning, Rachel. Thank morning. you for being here. Yeah. I've got Kathy Bledsoe. Kathy, thank you for being here also. Thank you for inviting me. And Stephanie Nancaro. Yes. All right. <laughs> I got it down. Good job. Well, thank you. I'll just go with Rachel, Kathy, and Stephanie, if that's all right, ladies. Yes. Fine. Well, welcome, and thank you for coming in so early here and talking to us this morning. It's a new initiative that the Indiana State Police have started, and it's something, I think, the first in the nation is what I'm hearing. Yep, yes. that's correct. And these ladies have uh, got something that's totally free, so it's going to be a great program to go out. But the Indiana State Police are announcing an education program to reduce online victimization of youth. So we'll start here to the left with Rachel, because you've kind of done this a little bit with us, right? You, give I us have. your give us your background, kind of how this started out. So um, back in 2010, mm-hmm. I started working for the state police as an intelligence analyst, okay. and my specialty was crimes against children. So during that time, one of my duties was to go out to schools and talk as much as possible, and I did quite a bit. Okay. Um, to say I've done a thousand of these is probably an understatement. I've done a lot. Um, So I left in 2013, I believe, went back to Purdue to work on my PhD and kind of come full circle and back to giving me presentations because it's so it's needed so much. And it it is needed. Obviously, we're getting these reports every day of uh, children that are being victimized on online. And so apparently with the ICAC, the Indiana Children or Indiana Crimes Against Children, uh, they got a grant with the uh, Indiana criminal justice institute and we're able to get you girls throughout the state of indiana there's going to be one north one middle one south i understand that if somebody wants a program they can contact you and have you come in and get a program is that right kathy exactly so have you uh started receiving requests for programs now oh tons um i think i'm totally booked for march and i have bookings all the way through september and w- willing and able to do more. So. Great. Well, the way I understand this, it's going to be uh, available to anybody. Youth groups, uh, is that right, Steph? Yeah. So have you Any got child book- group. Okay. Eight, eight, eight to 18 is what we're focusing on, but we're going to kind of go outside of that, too. Okay. And what are, what are you planning on giving, Rachel? What, what are the, if somebody calls you up, what can you offer them? So I tried to talk about general internet safety, um, all of the major topics from the online bad guys to sexting and why kids shouldn't be doing that to use cyberbullying, giving um, social media tips and then just general safety tips for me i customize the presentations for each school to fit their needs so i would say if you know they haven't really had too much of a cyberbullying problem but they have a huge sexting problem i can focus more on the sexting or vice versa so i try to customize it but yet still get all of the main topics across do you find and this is a question to all three of you ladies that kind of um, across the board and gives answer for each one of us are we finding today that the the youth of today find sexting it's not bad? It's every it's a norm. Everybody does it. Yeah, definitely. that's becoming the culture for sure. Really? Um, I did a presentation this week at a high school or local high school here in Indy, and all of them they say it's normal. It's becoming their culture, and I even asked that directly, and they're like, "Yeah, it's it's almost expected in a way." Mm-hmm. Really? And mm-hmm. the bad thing is, it's something so personal, but they feel anonymous doing it. And I can't figure out how you can do that and feel anonymous. Right. They send out all this personal, exactly who they are, skin deep, literally, sometimes. But they feel like, oh, no one can find me or it's not a big deal because I'm behind this piece of equipment. Yeah. And this is going to my friend Joey. Exactly. And, and he's mm-hmm. and he's just my friend. It's not going to go any further. But the moment they send it out, it's out of their hands. It can go to anyone and everyone. And Joey may not be the one who sends it out. Yeah. And your online predators can uh, a lot of times get things uh, further involved that even if Joey's got it, they can get it off his phone or exactly. his computer. D- do you find also that maybe they're, uh, I, I'm guessing this is going to be the affirmative answer, but they're living in the moment. They're not thinking of, hey, when I go out and get a job in 20 years, this is going to follow me. Definitely. I love it when kids tell me, well, I deleted it. So? <laughs> <laughs> Big or, deal. <laughs> they say, I, it was just on Snapchat. It's gone in 10 seconds. No. no right. <laughs> Yeah, it pains me when they say that. Yeah, oh, you're wrong. They yeah. don't understand that everything stays there. Yeah, they don't understand that it's out there on the web somewhere, isn't right. it? Mm-hmm. The breadcrumbs are there. 
if you're smart enough or have the right software, you can find anything. And right. also, adults are guilty of this as well, not to just pick on, right. on kids, people right. in general. It's kind of the yeah. norm of thinking that, you know, that level of an anonymity where I can send whatever I want, I can say whatever I want, I can do whatever I want because I'm not looking somebody in the eye, I'm looking at them on a screen. So um, when I was working originally as the intelligence analyst, every single day I got cyber tips of just this happening of sexting and people sharing, you know, these pictures or videos and just spreading them around online and social media through direct messages. I mean, any, any form. So I had an instance where I was talking to a good friend and she had a eight year old son that uh, a female had sent him photos. It wasn't completely new, but in the underwear and um, didn't felt that that was really bad because she was in her underwear, but that kind of is the place where it gets started and, and moves right. on up. And it. Mm-hmm. Well, part of the problem, I, I just saw an article about how they have lingerie for toddlers and for, you know, preteens. Lingerie for little kids, they're getting this message that it's okay to be sexualized. Yeah. And that, so sending this out just makes you cool or will get you attention, but they're not getting the message that, do you want to be responsible when you're 45 for something you did at 14? Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to follow you forever. Mm-hmm. Well, again, you're listening to the Indiana State Police Roadshow brought to you by the Indiana State Police Lions and Cops for Kids. And uh, we're talking about a new program that the Indiana State Police is offering. It's um, uh, Indiana State Police uh, announced a program to reduce online victimization. I've got Rachel, Kath- Kathy, and Stephanie here with me. These ladies can be contacted. Uh, what is that email where they can contact you? Uh, ICACYouthEd at ISP.IN.gov. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> I had a wrote down here. I was going to see if y'all knew. Yeah, that's I C A C for Indiana Crimes Against Children Youth Y O U T H Ed for Education at isp.in.gov. Or you can uh, contact any of your Indiana State Police Post, the, the uh, public information officer there. They can hook you up with these ladies because we're working hand in hand with these ladies to get this program out, and it's uh, totally free, right? Yes, yes. It's totally no grant funded. So. That means we can come and you don't have to worry about covering mileage or transportation. We have some places that want us to come back multiple times in a, in a week or right. multiple times in a day, and we can do it. And these are uh, specially designed for ages 8 to 18, but you say sometimes the parents are involved? Yes, yes. absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, I know I've been scheduling some where I talk to the kids all day, and then I talk to the parents after school or the teachers. Um, and I also encourage parents to bring their kids, even though that might be the second time they're hearing it. They can then go back and talk with their kids later on and say, well, remember what Rachel said in that presentation about cell phones? Remember this? Let's talk about this. It could be a, a point to start communicating about these topics. You, I'm sorry, go ahead. Ken. We're not just reaching out to schools. We're reaching out to youth, any kind of youth group. I have a dance company Excellent. that is uh, reserved time. I have Girl Scout troops. I have a Boy Scout camp that's reserving time. And it's really important that we get this message out to all the kids. Right. And if the parents want to tag along, better, because then at least they can go home and continue the conversation. And I understand you'll be doing some of our youth camps this yes. summer, too. The Indiana State Police Youth Camps are yes. going to provide this. Right. I was just um, contacted by them Sunday, right after church. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I work all the time. Um, and we're trying to set up some time for me to go out and do a presentation at the Trine University camp they're going to have. Oh, that's wonderful. Summer. Are you finding, uh, when you give this program, do you have any kids that come forward and say, hey, I know what you're talking about. I'm, I've been involved with this or Definitely. I've had this happen Definitely. to me. Definitely. And that's mm-hmm. one of the other goals, not just to present, but also to locate victims and to provide them with some services that maybe they're not ready or sure of how to find them. Right. So we're trying to reach out to the victims as well with this. So you have an avenue to point those kids to the right yes. areas so we can get them some help and find right. out what's going on in their lives. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And we'll, and some of the things that we're, we're talking about is online child sexual solicitation, online child extortion online child uh, online production of child pornography and online bullying and the, this something i i wasn't even thinking about was the mitigation to reduce the uh, recruitment of youth by terrorists and criminal extremists that's something that i hadn't even thought about a lot of people don't yeah <laughs> yeah well, so- i mean you have terrorist group coming out of nowhere essentially and the media is covering it now but it's easy for them to get to the kids online it's easy for the for them to get to adults online. Right. Um, We have terrorists in the United States. We may not know who they are, but it's certainly we need to know those signs of 
where they are, where they could be, or if they are a terrorist. And that's probably a good way to recruit those people is online. And I haven't even thought about that. Well, we have a lot of kids who feel like they have no voice except online. So they Mm -hmm. go online and they have these people who are willing to listen to them and then they'll start listening back. We right. need to let them know. Doesn't that, sound so bad what they're telling me. But it is. Yeah. They need to make sure they, they know that that's not, that's not how you get your voice out there. Do you find that uh, this is uh, taking over our, um, our youth uh, at more than what we've seen in the past? I mean, can, can we bring this back to what it needs to be, or is this beyond our control? I think we can educate as much as possible, and I think that will help right. reduce future crimes or future incidents. But I think that as techn- technology evolves, it's going to become an issue after issue after issue. But as long as we stay up on that technology, know how it works, and can educate about the technology, then I think we can kind of keep it at a tame level. Yeah, because we're kind of focused on the bad things. But there's many good things out there, correct? Exactly. Right. Oh, I mean, yeah. you have schools that are switching to technology completely, giving out iPads, giving out computers. Who knows? They might be giving out phones soon. We don't yeah. know. Um, but, I mean, the schools that I've talked to, they all have laptops yeah. while you're in class. Yeah, and yeah. In Indiana, virtual schools are growing. My son is actually in a virtual school in Indiana. Wow. And so they're spending basically all day online doing their lessons well the schools do a lot to protect them but we still need to educate the kids so that they if they see something they know how to handle it yeah kind of like the old age we always pushed out if you see something say something right Uh, say something to the parents or to your teacher or something but again we want to not focus all on the bad there's many great websites out there that can push kids in the right direction and have them do the right thing and do you cover those also do you talk about those Sure. Yeah. I talk about, you know, and I always, I always preface my, what I'm talking about with, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm right. not trying to deter you from using the internet or using social media and posting pictures online, any of that. Cause it's great. And it's way to stay connected and you can learn online and all of it. There's a lot of wonderful things about technology, but we have to be safe and we have to be proactive. And part of that is learning about these topics so that way we can start to recognize if something's occurring, if someone's trying to, you know, ask our friend for naked pictures or someone's trying to bully somebody else. We now know, okay, well, there's avenues I can take. There are people I can tell. I don't have to keep it to myself. I mm-hmm. don't have to be in this situation. I can talk to someone about it. Or if they see something happening to a friend. Yeah. They push it out and, and get some help for those people. Definitely. Well, what I find was very interesting about this, and uh, I'm reading this from uh, our news release that went out there, 61 ICAC task force in the United States, uh, 61 uh, Crimes Against Children Task Force in the United States, and Indiana is the first one to have this full-time youth education. Yes. So that is something else. That is exciting. great. That is wonderful. And, and hopefully we get these uh, presentations out. We'll be able to do this again next year and keep this going. So... Again, that uh, email site, uh, ICAC Youth, ICAC Youth Ed at isp.in.gov. And um, the curriculum can be made for whatever they want, right? From Absolutely. an hour to a full day. Is that correct? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. I have uh, at least a couple of places that's asked me to do some hands on activities, some sit downs, and some just one to one talking with some of their classes. Um, Good. And we're more than willing to come out and do that. Um, we also can sp- specify, you know, if you have a, a group of eight-year-olds that experience cyberbullying, then we'll talk about that specifically. Yes, we'll go over all the other issues, but we can kind of narrow our talk to talk about what you need yeah. the kids to hear. That's great. That's wonderful. And again, like we talked about before we went on the air, it's not bad for the parents to be there because a lot of times the kids know more than the parents. Absolutely. Exactly. You have the kids teaching parents yeah. how to use this technology. I know I'm teaching my parents and then even my grandparents right now how to use technology. Yeah. And so I can keep from them what I want to keep from them and tell them what I want to tell them. <laughs> so that's exactly what our youth can do. You haven't grown up yet, have you? <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies, we're down to our last 30 seconds. I really appreciate you being in here, and I appreciate us. what you're doing. And you. uh, we uh, appreciate this program that's available to anybody in Indiana. Again, ICAC Youth, I-C-A-C-Y-O-U-T-H-E-D at ISP.IN.GOV. Totally free to any school, uh, church organization, any organization out there that wants to get a hold of these ladies, they can help you out with that. So again, the Indiana State Police Alliance, Cops for Kids, thank you very much. We appreciate you doing this each and every week. We'll be here again next week. Thanks for listening. The Roadshow is out.